with Dr. Heba Mohammed. Now, Dr. Mohammed is based at the Institute of Endemic Diseases at the University of Khartoum in Sudan. Dr. Mohammed was awarded the Royal Society Pfizer Award last year in 2007 for her pioneering research into genetic susceptibility to leishmanias, a parasitic disease transmitted by sandfly bites. Her discoveries have increased the understanding of how the disease develops in humans and may help to design therapies which will stimulate the immune system to develop defenses against the disease. Dr. Mohammed was uh, awarded £60,000 as, her, her, as uh, uh, the award grant to further her research into this neglected area with the aim of developing a preventative treatment. The Royal Society Pfizer Award was established in 2006 with the aim of helping expand research capacity in developing countries and recognizing the valuable research taking place in Africa. Uh, the 2008, uh, 2008 award ceremony is taking place tomorrow night. Now, this evening, our event is chaired by Sir Magda Yacoub, uh, one of the fellows of the Royal Society, but who probably needs a uh, little introduction from me. Uh, but I will say that he was born in Egypt, studied at Cairo University, where he qualified as a doctor in 1957. He was involved in the first UK heart transplant in 1980, 1980, carried out the first UK live lobe lung transplant and has gone on to perform more transplants than any other surgeon in the world. He is currently Professor of Cardiothoracic Surgery at Imperial College London. Sir Magdi is closely involved with the Royal Society's international policy work in Africa. His strong sense of social responsibility led him to establish the Chain of Hope charity, which sends teams of medics to the developing world to treat children suffering from heart disease free of charge. I'm now going to hand over to him and uh, have him in conversation with Dr. Mohammed, but at some stage we'll want you to join in and ask some of the questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Castleton, and uh, it really is a privilege for me to be here to join in the celebration of uh, our awardee. Uh, you have heard about her work, but I'm sure all of you, including myself, uh, are anxious to know more about what this work all means and how did it come about. So uh, we welcome you here and congratulations again on your uh, achievement. Um, I would like to start by asking you a simple question. And the question goes like this. Um, how did this all happen? What inspired you to go into science? Why did you do all this? Uh, where are you coming from? Where are you now? And where do you think you want to go? Um, a whole lot of things. Forgive me for that. But I'm sure uh, our audience here would like to hear it from you. So can you start from the beginning? Thank you very much. Uh, I would like first to thank the Royal Society for uh, the last uh, year awards and for the opportunity to come here again and to have this conversation with uh, Professor Mike Diago. It is a pleasure. Uh, first to start, uh, I'm Hiba Mohammed. Uh, I was born in a small island uh, lies on the confluence of the Blue and White Nile in the capital of Khartoum. Uh, it sounds very beautiful. It is. It is uh, a beautiful the, place. Uh, uh, do you remember your childhood? I remember it, yeah, very well. So, uh, I, I, when I started my uh, studies in the University of Khartoum, uh, in Faculty of Science, I was interested in zoology and looking for living organisms under microscopes. and. And then I started my interest in leishmaniasis when I was 
in Faculty of Science in my fifth year. Can I, can I ask you why did you go into science in the first place? Okay. I mean, uh, for a young lady growing up in Khartoum, uh, is that the usual thing to do? Uh, it's not the usual thing. For us in Sudan and all, almost in all African uh, countries, people like to go to medicine. It's the, first, it's the priority for everyone who takes uh, science as a career. And when I, 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 I didn't through the exam, I want to go to medicine. I, I can't lie, but uh, when I been accepted in Faculty of Science, I, uh, my, my parents uh, convinced me it's nice to be in, a, in, in science and to, to work hard and to, to go in this career rather to be uh, a medical officer like many other people. So when I started... Uh, oh, excuse me again, I mean, science is... Um, you're implying a little bit, mm. but uh, I might strengthen that. It's a bit downgraded. People uh, don't understand what science is all about. Um, and uh, maybe, I mean, you imply as well, I mean, that you wanted to go to medical school, but maybe the second best was science. Mm -hmm. uh, medicine, I submit, is also a science. And maybe that takes us to how do you define science? For me, to define science is it's a, it's a appropriate word to talk about science because, as you said, everyone could be a scientist. But the, the, the department where, where I started is uh, uh, it start to think about uh, research and what is going in Africa. You think about science and we need research. For, for in Sudan, for example, not all medical officers, they do research, but now they started and now everyone think about research is a priority. Okay, let's mm. go back to the word science. Mm. And I think um, you just said very nicely and um, beautifully that everybody, anybody can do research and that is science, and you equated science to research. And I'm just uh, reminded by some philosophers of science, mm. like Karl Popper, mm. uh, who is uh, a philosopher who has influenced the thinking of people uh, in the 20th century. And he defines science, to me anyway, in a very uh, clear fashion, and that was science was the search for the truth, and that the truth is beautiful. Uh, so that is really quite an exciting thing. And if I may, may just interrupt you a little bit more, uh, I come from Egypt as well, and you come from Sudan, and this Nile thing. And uh, the ancient Egyptians knew about science. I think, I submit, because the goddess of the truth was the most beautiful goddess. So they knew that you have to search for the truth, and the truth is beautiful, and even if it's, not, it's unattainable. So science is really not uh, something which should be downgraded. But as you said, do you think in Africa, science and research people just don't think about? Actually, uh, it's true. People that don't think about science. And when I was talking uh, before, like when you look for people who uh, start their career in science, there's few people interested to do science because people think science is not a priority for, for us in Africa. People think about disease and how they control disease, but they don't think about the implementation of science and how it could help. And actually, most of the government in African societies, they don't allocate money for research. The priority for control now, but no one thinks about what science with, will, will come with. Uh, and, 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 and actually, people think about for personal uh, thinking, people think it's not rewarding. People think about money and uh, to improve their uh, life uh, quality and think science is not rewarding as a time being. This is the whole story. So it's a big, big mistake that but they don't 
uh, understand what science is yeah. all about, how important research is, and do you think that is uh, a lack of education um, or a lack of understanding or um, the Royal Society, for example, has um, a program which is entitled Best Practice in Role Modeling. And uh, role modeling in science is really important and it could be start at school level. So maybe as children they are not uh, shown by the role model, the teacher or a scientist they look up to that science is important and yet you defied all that and went on to do science. So that's uh, a great achievement, another achievement from the beginning to go into science and tell us more how what you have done. Uh, as I said, uh, I was born in Tutti Island and actually this place in 1988, it was, uh, there was an uh, epidemic of uh, sort of a disease called cutaneous leishmaniasis. It's a sort of uh, the same disease but <coughs> different phenotype. It transmitted by some fly but it affects the skin only and self-healing. And I was living in this island and most of the people in the island was affected, even a member of my family. So when I was in... Children or adults children, or both? Children, adults, everyone, everybody. everyone, yeah. But when, when I started my, my uh, dissertation for partial fulfillment in the Faculty of Science, uh, my supervisor, he was an entomologist. So he asked me, what, what do you want to do? So I, I, I said, I want to start to think, to look for this sunfly which transmitted this disease to us. So I start to look to the different sunfly and classification of sunfly and so on. So this is when I start to, to think about Lashmaniasis as a disease. And uh, I, I done my dissertation for the partial fulfillment for my fifth year in Faculty of Science. And after that, uh, I got interested because I joined the uh, Leishmaniasis Research Group in the University of Khartoum at Institute of Endemic Disease. And, and the father of Leishmaniasis Group is uh, Professor Ahmed Mohammed Al Hassan, who worked a lot in Leishmaniasis. Why is he the father? Because he started this research in Sudan and he is leading our group. He he been working this disease for a long time ago. So and he, the whole institute is dedicated to to this particular disease? No, it is Institute for Endemic Disease. Endemic we, disease. we have research in malaria, leishmaniasis, tuberculosis, uh, schizomiasis, many tropical and endemic diseases. But one of them is leishmaniasis. And, and I started to do my master's degree with Professor Al Hassan. And we worked in my island looking for cutaneous leishmaniasis in Tuti Island, the distribution of the disease among children and adults. So we, we made a survey for the whole schools, uh, students in, in different uh, schools in, in the island and looked for their immune response to the disease and so on. So, uh, so my master's degree was, also was in leishmaniasis, but it was in cutaneous leishmaniasis. And after I finished my master's degree, while I was writing up my thesis, uh, Professor Hassan came again and he said, he got an, uh, a, a, a chance for me to continue my postgraduate study and to do my PhD, and this time in visceral leishmaniasis. And actually for me, it's, it, I was uh, eager to go further and to work in this disease because for me, visceral leishmaniasis is the most fatal type of disease. And it affects uh, many people in Sudan, for example, when you look for the disease in endemic areas in Eastern Sudan, which is a remote area, inaccessible during rainy season, and people are really marginalized people in this area. The disease kills uh, in Eastern Sudan itself, about 5,000 people die every year. And, and because uh, the blessing... And these are poor people, as you say, they underprivileged are and... Uh, they have that problem on top of everything else. Exactly, and even they don't have money to go to the hospital. So most of people die because they, they couldn't reach the hospital before they die. So when he asked me to, to start to do my... But apart from death, mm. it's also crippling. 
Yeah. For all these people. Exactly. It's a chronic disease it's as well as a killer.